Hi, this is Steve Bartholomew from Dominator Athletics, and what we're going to be doing today is building a pneumatic shot put cannon. Now basically a pneumatic cannon is a glorified potato gun. The only difference is we use air pressure instead of uh, combustion, so there's no hairspray or, or any other combustible material in this. So it's a little bit safer to use and also a lot more powerful and more controllable as well. We can control the air pressure coming in with a regulator so we can control the exact speed that our, our products will be coming out of this cannon. Uh, the ammo that we're going to be using to start off with is this four kilogram women's shot put. You know, other companies have taken their shot puts, dropped them out of uh, helicopters or airplanes or, or whatever. But the thing is, no matter how high you go, the shot put is only going to reach terminal velocity. Now, I happen to think uh, what would happen if we were to shoot a shot put at four to five hundred miles per hour at a brick wall? So that's the idea behind uh, this cannon that we're going to build today. Uh, if I did my math correctly, uh, we should be able to achieve you know right around five hundred miles an hour, um, depending on wind and friction. So I'm going to take you through the building process, and we'll see what we come up with. All right, now the heart of this cannon is going to be a two and a half inch barrel sealing piston valve. Now we're going to be building this valve in this PVC T. Now the way I'm going to start off building the valve is I'm going to take this four to three reducer that's going to go in the end of the, the PVC T right here. I'll be running this three inch pipe through it. Uh, the way we do that is we grind off this little lip on the inside of the, the reducer right here. That way the pipe can slide freely all the way through it. When the pipe slides all the way through, we're going to take this three to two and a half reducer. It'll be brought backwards through the pipe. It's going to sit just like that. And then on the front of the, th the four to three reducer, we have a Schedule 80 uh, three inch fitting right here with, with threads on it. This is what we're going to uh, screw our barrel onto. The reason I use Schedule 80 for this part isn't because of the, the pressure. Everything here is rated for at least, I believe, 220 PSI. This is, uh, I think, over 400, I'm not sure. But this is going to be a main stress point in the, in the cannon, so I wanted the extra thickness and extra strength of Schedule 80. But, I mean, these, these are like 17 bucks. They cost about four times as much as typical fittings. So what I'm going to do is get this all, all glued up and all show you the first part of this step completed. All right, we're back and I've glued together the first few parts here. This is probably the most difficult part of the entire project just because when you're working with uh, PVC cement it's very difficult to get large pieces situated the way you want because you really only have a few seconds and then once once they're stuck, they're stuck and you're out you know a pretty great deal of money if you screw up. So basically what I did is this piece right here, I started by putting a 6 inch long piece of 3 inch PVC pipe uh, in, into this piece right here. Um, these, these fittings all are 2 inches across. So I did a 6 inch piece of pipe. Uh, I made sure the ends were cut really square, sanded down really well. Uh, something that's not really necessary but it's a good thing to do. Um, then the next step was to, like I said, cut that ring off on the inside of here. Um, a Dremel will, will do just fine. You can use a box cutter, uh, probably use a cylinder hone or some, something like that. Uh, you just need to take off enough that you'll be able to slide the pipe through it. Uh, in this particular case, I didn't really take off enough, so it was incredibly difficult for me to get uh, the three inch pipe, you know, to get the three inch pipe to slide through from the back. Um, so it was pretty nerve-wracking right there because just all together right here this is like thirty dollars worth of fittings almost uh, and then the last piece right here this is what goes inside of the valve and that just slides right on so we're all said and done you've got this apparatus right here weighs it's a pretty hefty amount of plastic the thickness of plastic you know from here to here all the way down is almost an inch thick so that's going to give us a lot of strength um, the next step is going to be to insert this into the actual valve and glue it in, or into the actual PVC T and glue it in. I'm not going to push it in yet, but this will end up uh, a little bit more than halfway down. And 
after I do that, I'm going to flip it up. You'll see inside of here the gaps along the edges. I'm going to pour some marine epoxy down there so this entire thing, this entire valve is all going to be completely solid, solid material there. So it'll provide a lot more strength. And that'll be the next step. All right, we got the front of the valve glued in right here. As you can see, I didn't get it pushed in all the way. Uh, I do believe it is in uh, far enough to seal correctly. Uh, and anytime you're working with fittings this big, it's incredibly difficult to get them pushed down in there. I flip this up on its end, and the second I put it in there, I pushed down with you know, every amount of body weight I had, and it still didn't want to go down all the way, so uh, hope, hopefully it's in there pretty good. Uh, I've never had one of these blow out before, even with up to uh, about 150 PSI in them, so I don't recommend doing that, but I, I'm pretty sure it'll still hold up. And like I said before, we're going to be uh, filling this with epoxy as well. So, should be airtight no matter what, should be incredibly strong. The next step we're going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of 4 inch PVC pipe to fit in the back of the T here, and that way we can hook on our our clean out. So we're going to have a clean out on the back, or not, it's not a clean out, this is the clean out, but this will be our uh, little adapter on the back, forgot what these are called. Uh, whenever you get these things, always, always make sure you're using Schedule 40 pressurated pipe. It'll say, you know, it'll say on here, I can't really see it through the camera very well, but it does say Schedule 40 on here at some point. And also the cap, never get one of those caps with the with the square thing right here to to take it out. That's just a drain waste vent cap. It's they're not ra they're not rated for anything. And this is actually a Schedule 80 cap. So this is a very, very, very thick plastic. It's almost three quarters of an inch thick, you know, on the inside here. That's what I'm going to drill a hole in and thread my exhaust pipe in the back. So, like I said, be very, very careful when you're buying these fittings. Always make sure you use Schedule 40 or Schedule 80, because drain, you know, DWV fittings will explode. So we're going to get a piece of pipe cut. We're going to put this on, and then the valve will at least look complete. All right, we're back. I actually lied about what the next step was going to be. I forgot I had to uh, f fill this thing with epoxy. So what I used for this was a, a two-part marine epoxy. I get it from Aero Marine Products. Uh, I'm not sure what the website is. I think it's just aeromarine.com. But basically they have the, uh, the best marine epoxy I've ever used, and it's also the cheapest. Uh, it's uh, basically a boat building, boat building, uh, highly viscous epoxy, so it's really watery. It uh, mixes really well. You don't have to be exact on your measurements, and it, and it pours really well. The reason I'm holding this at an angle is because I put a little bit, a little bit too much in there. So if I, if I tilt it, um, it's going to come out where my thumb is right here. If I if I put it straight up and down, so that added uh, about half a pound to this thing since it's basically going to be solid solid plastic now and I mixed up a little bit too much epoxy so I figured might as well just throw it in the cap and in the process of building this I've determined that I'm probably going to build that cap up all the way so it's about two inches thick of solid material back there and I might also embed a spring in it to catch the, the piston as it flies back so it won't cause any damage uh, to this cap back here but I'm going to uh, wait for this stuff to dry. Uh, it's uh, about 90 degrees outside, so it should be dry in uh, a few hours here, at least enough that it's not going to pour back out. And then after 24 hours, it should be cured all the way. Um, like I said, uh, it's from Aero Marine Products. It's the best epoxy I've ever used. Uh, I use it for uh, primarily for wooden boat building, uh, impregnating fiberglass and carbon fiber, that type of stuff. But it's, it's great stuff if you ever need anything like that. Alright, I've got the valve outside here with the epoxy drying. I've got it in the sunlight to help it uh, cure a little quicker. That way I'll be able to work with it. And in the meantime, I finished uh, making my piston right here. This is basically just a 3 inch coupler. It is not pressurated. It's just a drain waste vent coupler. It, it doesn't need to uh, have any strength um, on, on its sides. Just uh, lengthwise in here. 
Now you can see in here I've put a uh, metal disc, I believe it is eighth inch thick, just a uh, steel plate. Um, I put a little spacer against the rim on the inside of the piston right here for the plate to sit on. And then on this side I took a truck inner tube tire and cut up uh, I think three or four discs to fit underneath that uh, the spacer that I have on the other side of the metal to fit in there. Uh, I'd peel it back but it's kind of hard to get to it so I made these fit pretty well. And then the top rubber spacer that, that fits on that. Um, I'll explain how this all works when I when I get to it, when I assemble it, but that's basically the piston. Oh, I used, uh, the reason I used a drain waste vent, you know, a DWV fitting, is because the uh, exterior diameter is nearly exactly the same as the interior diameter of a four inch pipe. So it slides pretty pretty easily in there. All I had to do was grind off the little the, the little edges and stuff on it. If you use a Schedule 40 coupler, it probably will not fit. And it depends on the brand, I, I would assume. Uh, either way, I'll be back with, a, uh, with an assembly of the valve.